Welcome to Bandit's Keep Actual Play. I'm Daniel. I'm continuing my solo original Dungeons & Dragons campaign. This part is kind of the war gamey part. The, uh, uh, there had been a horde of goblins uh, raiding villages, and a group of mercenaries went out and fought them. Well, the goblins were routed and broke off into two factions. And in this video, the factions are going to fight to see who is the new leader of the goblins. By the way, thanks everyone for the great feedback on my last chain mail battles. Purple Druid Presents, especially. Thank you for coming in and pointing out I was mixing my scales. I recorded these before I discussed that with you, so the scales are still off. <laughs> but at least the groups are more balanced this time, so hopefully it works out. And in any case, I had a lot of fun doing it. I'm going to make some house rules to kind of explain how I prefer to do it versus how the rules actually seem to say that you do it, uh, because I kind of like a combination of what was described to me by Purple Druid and what I'm doing. So... In any case, let's get to the goblin battle. All right, so we're dealing now with the aftermath of the raid on the goblin horde's lair, basically by the black hounds. Now, the black hounds are in rest. In the game world, it is the first, we'll say the second of, of June. So basically, right now, the black hounds are raiding the lair, right? They're taking the gold, they're collecting the goblins' heads. They're going to need to rest for probably six or seven days before they can move on. So they're basically uh, camped there. I determined through some oracle rolls that the goblins may or may not come back and attack them, but in any case, the goblins have broken up into two groups. So essentially, two potential kings have arisen. One of a very small group, 80, roughly uh, like 71, and another of a much larger group, over 200. Now, the question is, so a couple things. The question is, which of these two groups is, so they're fighting, right? Which of these two groups is the aggressor? We need to figure out. But also, you know, I was thinking to myself, goblins ride wolves, right? Like, where does that come from? And I, I took a look. So if we look at chain mail, under goblins, it says nothing. If we look under OD&D, it says nothing. But if we look in chain mail here, under giant wolves, it says including wargs and direwolves, these creatures are equal to light horse in attack and medium horse in movement. They can bear small creatures like goblins on their back, and it reduces their speed and whatnot. So then I thought, hmm, okay, AD&D. Okay, so I pulled out the monster manual. You know, and being the monster manual was the first uh, part of AD&D, it came out in 77, I think. It's still kind of part of OD&D, right? Um, at least when you were, you would have been using it with OD&D, or you might have used it. And when we read this, I'm not going to read it all, but it basically says that any large group of goblins, 25% of their forces may be riding wolves. Okay, so we're not going to retcon, obviously, our huge combat, and who knows why the wolves weren't there to begin with, but let's do a little bit of oracling and see if we can bring any wolves into play in these groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to say... Black die, yes. White die, no. Do the goblins have access to any wolves? Okay, they do. So, do both groups of goblins have access to wolves? Oh. I'm going to say yes to that. That's basically uncertain, but we'll say yes, because we know they have access. So, both of them have access to wolves. So, 25% of their forces are going to be on wolves. That could be interesting to us. Now, let's figure something else out before I figure out the figures, which of the, which of the goblin groups? So you can't answer, you can't ask the Oracle a question, which of the groups, but I can say, is the smaller group the aggressor? Yes. Okay. So you've got a small group of goblins going after a big group of goblins. Why? If they're going to do that, they're going to try to come in and maybe just kill that goblin king. Maybe this is a close call and they got a few loyal people Everybody else that's on the other side are kind of in the middle and they could go either way. So that's what we're going to set this politically. I'm going to set up, since they're the aggressor, I'm going to set the big group up like they're, they have an encampment. Maybe they're planning to go out to attack the hounds. This small group is going to come in and see if they can take out the Goblin King. That'll be their goal. If they can take out the other side's Goblin King, then that Goblin King will become victorious. And the next thing they might do is go after the hounds. Okay, so I've just been thinking as I'm writing these things up and... 25% of the first group would have been nearly 100. So perhaps the smaller group is all the wolf riders. That kind of makes sense narratively, but I'm going to give it a chance. If not, then I'll split it up equally. 
it, or more or less equally, is the small group, I'm going to say there's a good chance of that. So, again, white is yes, black is no. Is the smaller group all the Wolf Riders? Yes. Okay. So, group, the group with 71 are all the Wolf Riders. They believe that their leader, the Wolf Rider, you know, the head of the Wolf Riders, should be the leader of the, all the goblins. We're going to say that the, the other goblin is just some, like, elite goblin that is like, no, no, I'm the, I'm the head goblin. So the Wolf Rider is going to come in and see if this very small pack of wolves can take out a much larger army. So let's see what happens. Okay, the battlefield is set up. The actual, the, huh, the wolf guys are off the screen right now. They're going to come in from the south. Because uh, there's some trees back here to hide their approach. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to roll kind of a surprise check, if you will. Because these guys, I mean, they're fortified, right? Because they're thinking that possibly the, the humans are going to get after them. But at the same time, these, these goblins are trying to be slick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, again, just using the oracle, white is yes, black is no. Can these guys, the wolf riders, get in one full movement before... Active before everybody else gets activated. So do they get surprised? If not, then we'll just roll initiative. Oh, okay, no. I'm gonna roll again, because that's a <laughs> that's a maybe, right? No, they can't. Okay. So we're just gonna roll straight up initiative. The white die will be for the wolf riders, the black die will be for the the encampment. <laughs> wow, a lot of ties today. Okay, I don't want ties, so I'm just gonna roll again. Again, white white die, wolf riders. Okay, they're going to get to go first. So, we have them spread out here. Again, their goal is to get them. That's all they care about. This, These guys, their goal is to protect them. That's all they care about. So, our wolves are all basically the same. We have a movement of 12. And remember, I'm using centimeters instead of inches for my translation here. And remember that any turns or anything like that, they do cost them half as much because of the fact that they are horses, basically. So looking at all of our stuff, they're obviously going to go around the, the trees. I'm not going to go through that because that'll eat up their movement. So as a heavy horse, their movement is 12. And also, if you didn't notice, they're coming in all separately. All right, so their regular movement is 12, 12 centimeters as it would be. So I'm just going to move this guy straight up. Same here. These, they're basically the lower lined up so they can go like that. Nobody's turning or anything yet. They're just going to move. Uh, and again, they run an issue, so I, they chose to go first. These guys clearly see them coming. They know that they're in a good spot, that they're on a hill. So on a hill, they're not going to want to retreat, right? These guys, though, are going to want to close here and protect their, their, their leader. So they're going to want to form a line this way. So what they're actually going to do is take half their movement. So Goblin's movement is six. They're going to make a right face. That'll cost half their movement. Or, yeah, it'll be a right face. And the other guy's going to make a left face. They'll make a right face like that. And then they're going to use a quarter of their movement to go oblique. So they're easily going to go like that. And then then we'll move forward. Uh, an inch and, uh, sorry, a centimeter and a half. That's not very far, but... No, that's what they're going to do. These guys have the water there, which is good. And again, they know they can't really get to the enemy first, so they're going to do... Exactly. They're going to actually do an about phase, which takes a full movement because they're going to move forward, basically. You know, towards their, their leader, basically. The leader's going to stay where they are. These guys are going to stay where they are. These guys are kind of out there. They can't do much. They'll make, they'll take half their movement to turn sideways and they're going to try to come up and approach the leader. So they'll then move three centimeters to there. Oops. And we're good to go. I need my little tokens. It's kind of fun because, you know, at, at first, when I was first setting up to do this, I was thinking to myself, well, you just track time. You don't want to worry about this. But 
you do need to worry because some people don't move sometimes. <laughs> and also other actions like malaise and stuff like that can affect it. So these guys are basically good to go. Everybody has moved once. There is no missile fire. Nobody's in Malay. So we're basically done with the first turn. If I can remember, I'm going to actually track the turns because that'll be fun. Okay, next turn. White die is wolves. Black is the footman. Okay, they can go first again if they want. And I think they do want to go first because their plan is to get uh, into position. Okay, yeah. So... This guy wants to, the plan for their, their plan is going to be this group right here, which is, it probably should have been the leader, but it's fine. Let me just swap those because that's how I would have done it. Okay. I'll just pop it in there. This one right here is just going to try to get to them. This guy and this guy are going to try to keep these guys off. So I, I don't know if they're within 18 inches. So they can, oh my, oh, 18 centimeters. Oh no, they're not. Wow. They're just out of range. Okay, so they can't charge, but they're going to move up. Although, if both sides charge... Huh. They could charge them, too, hoping for the best. Let me look up with how that works, because you can charge as a footman as well. Uh, in order to withstand a charge by mounted men... Okay, no. The charge will not benefit them at all. <laughs> you know, it, it would... They would charge if they thought this guy could get past them, but they know I mean, he's not going to be able to. So what they're going to do, because they want to charge, is they're actually going to... They're going to do an oblique turn, which take will take one-eighth of their movement. And again, they move 12. So that's like two inches. And then they're going to come this way. or two, I should say two centimeters. They're going to come this way, six, leaving them with eight more. And then they're actually going to, actually they'll go two more than that. So they'll go eight, leaving them with four more, which means they can then oblique turn again. This way they're facing their opponent. And they. I, I think by doing that, they're not going to be able to charge them because they, they won't be able to, turn far enough to get to where they need to go. These guys on the outside are going to, you know, why charge the front of somebody when you can charge the back, right? So they're going to do an oblique turn using up two centimeters, and then they're going to ride 10 centimeters straight forward this way. These guys are just going for it, so they're just going to go their full 12. This way, even though they might get hit in the flank, but I don't know if they will or not. Okay. Okay, so they've all moved. That's that side. So let's give them tokens. Okay, now let's do this side. Again, they can't... If they do an oblique turn, it's only to here. So it's kind of like two oblique turns. So they're going to take half their movement if they want to face them, which they probably do because they really don't want to be charged in the side. And because they did that, they've only got half their movement left, which is basically three centimeters. So they'll move forward three centimeters. They know they're going to get charged, but at least they're getting charged straight on as opposed to, uh, you know, and that's their purpose, right? They're there to be charged. This guy's going to do an oblique turn. And then he's going to move. So that uses a quarter, which is like a centimeter and a half. So he's got four and a half centimeters of movement. They're staying... These guys are going to move now. They're going to make an oblique turn again, which then only gives them four and a half centimeters, which they can they can actually get. And they are going to hit them in the flank. But again, I think the horses, it was a risk, but I feel like the horses were, were willing to do it. And then these guys, huh, how loyal are they? I'm going to roll... White is very loyal. Black is not so much for this moment, moment anyways. Okay. Try again. Okay. So they're going to be loyal. So they are going to still try to protect. So they're not going to worry that they're about to, get, about to get slammed. And they're going to make an oblique turn here. And then move forward four and a half. 
centimeters, again, to block this group of riders. All right, so everybody's moved that's going to move, but we do have a Malay. So what we have here is the footmen are making a flank attack. Now, when you make a flank attack, you attack as one level higher. You need to attack from the flank are the next higher class. Okay. So basically what ends up happening here is they are normally attacking as light foot. They're going to instead attack as armored foot, which might not be good for the horses. So, because there are, oh, right. So they're all equal ranks. They're 25. So we'll say five ranks of five in both cases. So it's basically five, five against five. So armored foot, I believe that it's the same. We'll take a look. So armored foot against light horse, one die per man, six kills. Light horse against armored foot, one die, six kills. So it's five and five. All right, so we got 10 dice, five and five. The white are the wolf riders. The black are the footmen. Any sixes are kills. Oh, okay. Look at that. Only one kill, but it is one of the riders that got killed. Okay, interesting. So they're down one. And that's the end of that Malay. Now we need to do, that's not enough to trigger a regular morale check, but we do need to do post Malay morale. This is where we get to do all the math. <laughs> Always fun. Okay, so the way this works is the side with the fewer casualties, okay, so the footmen, because they didn't lose anybody, determines the positive difference between their losses and those suffered by the enemy. So one, the numbers that multiplied by the side of one die. So five. So they get that. This is the footman. They got a number of, they get five. The side with the greater number of surviving troops, which again is them because they have 25 versus 24, or actually it's 22, uh, that were involved in the Malay determines the positive difference. Actually, let me, let me check the actual number here. So 20, so, 20, so the difference is five. So they have another. So they've got plus five. Okay, each side now multiplies their surviving figures, separating by type if more than one is involved uh, by the morale. Okay, so they have 25 figures, and they are heavy foot, so that's 25 times 5, which is 125 plus 10, so 135 is their number. The horsemen have 20 surviving figures. They're treated as light horse, 20 times 6 which is the number we have here, is 120. So there's a difference of 15. And we look at this, and from uh, 0 to 19, Malay continues. Okay, so nobody switches. Everything's good. It's We're going to go into a second, uh, a second round of Malay. Now, I think the horseman might actually be exhausted. No, they didn't charge. Okay, so they can they got one more turn before they're gonna be. Okay. That's the end of that melee, and now we come into the next uh, round. We'll do that melee at the end, obviously. We'll all right, so we'll go into the next movement phase. So this is interesting. Um, who wins? The white is the wolves. Okay. These guys get to move first. Well, they clearly do not want to be charged, and I think they're close enough to charge the wolves. Their charge is Nine, nine centimeters. Yeah, they're close enough. So they can actually charge uh, them, which doesn't do much except for stopping them from charging, right? which is what they want. So they're going to actually move up. Boom. Now they're in a melee. Which again... Oh, do they have enough movement to... I don't, they didn't have enough to get around. One, next turn, these guys will be able to come up and flank. So right now it's only going to be one unit against one unit. But next turn, it'll be uh, it'll be different. Okay. These guys, of course, want to... They're going to change... They actually can't fit through here. Their whole thing was just to be a blockade. So I guess that's what they're going to do. I'm not going to even bother measuring. That's another oblique turn. That's plenty of movement. They're just literally just going to move to here. 
the next turn they'll they'll turn to column formation so that they can actually get through if they need to, depending on how this melee goes. So they're gonna do that. These guys over here are gonna, again, they wanna protect the leader, so they're gonna do a two oblique turns and they're just gonna move this way. They used half their movement, they're gonna go like that. Once they're there, they're probably gonna take a break. Okay, the only people on the, the, on the wolf side that can move is these guys. So they're gonna circle around, hoping for a possible charge. So they're gonna actually move a nine, and then they're gonna turn, and it'll still, still a oblique turn, they'll still have a centimeter and a half. So they're gonna go like that. So they're hoping to get a charge on these other guys, but they won't be able to do it. They're probably gonna have to rest. Okay, I think everybody has now moved. So we have a couple of malays. Let's do this one first. Now we do have something interesting here. Because we're in, oh, actually they can, they can turn because they're, 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 they're gonna turn so they're facing them. They don't wanna, <laughs> they do not wanna be, you know, they just turn. Okay, so now they're facing them head on so they're no longer flanked. So that makes it a little more of a better battle for them. And we can actually go into the melee here first. So now there's no longer a flank going on. So they, they had their advantage in the first round, but this round, not so much. Because now we've got, again, the ranks are five. So we got five light horse. And they now, now the goblins, the goblin footmen defend as light foot. So light horse against light foot is two dice per man, five or six killing. The goblins are attack as heavy foot against light horse. Uh, heavy foot against light horse is one die per two men. And again, the ranks are five. So the way this works is these guys actually get 10 dice with fives and sixes killing. So I'm going to roll all 10 of these dice. Uh, and they'll all be for the, the wolves. I remember, it's simultaneous, so the other guys will still get to attack. But they're going to roll ten dice and any fives or sixes or kills. No, they didn't do as well as I thought they would have. Okay. So they got four kills. And... Okay. So that's GB8. So that's four. Okay. Back here, they're only rolling two dice because there's five guys and it's one die per two men and only sixes kill. But they got one. All right. Well, these horsemen aren't doing as well as they were hoping. All right. And neither side has lost enough to trigger an immediate morale check. So let's jump over here. This is going to be the exact same thing because, again, we're straight on. And only this group can attack this turn. Next turn, they're going to get surrounded and they're going to be in a lot of trouble. But for now, that's what's going on. So it's the exact same thing. Okay, they did a little bit better. Knocking out five of GB5. And five is 25%, which I think we were treating goblins as heavy foot last time as far as the casual things, so they won't make a morale check at this point because they attack as heavy foot. So, well, I guess defense and morale. You know what? I don't really know which way to do that, so I'm going to roll. <laughs> I'm going to roll this. Are the goblins, if the white die is higher, they're going to do morale as light foot, and if the black die is higher, they're going to do it as heavy. And that'll just be consistent. Well, roll a lot of doubles. Okay, they're doing his light foot. Okay, so 25% is gone, which means that they have to make a morale check immediately. Oh, hold on. They get to attack first, though. They got no kills. Okay. So 25%. They got to make this morale check. They got to score eight or better on two dice, or that middle group will run. I'm not going to consider it. I'm considering everybody separate groups at this point, as opposed to one large unit. 
They didn't do it. Okay. This middle group retreats off the board, which is actually good because the <laughs> these guys are no longer engaged. If they win initiative, they're going to be able to rush through here and not and get away from these two guys, which is what they're going to try to do if they win initiative. If they don't win initiative, then they've like, got no choice. They're basically stuck. This melee over here, though, it did not result in that. So what we have is four guys lost from this group, so more losses. Again, we'll go back and do the math again. Probably should do one complete one so it's not uh, confusing, but luckily it wasn't so big that I forgot. Okay. The, the side with fewer casualties which is the horseman side, figures out the difference between them. So they lost one versus four. So three multiplied by a D6. So 12. This is the, this is the wolf riders. The side with the greater number of surviving troops. Okay, so they are now down to 21. These guys are down to 19. So this is the, it's still the goblins. They're surviving by two. So they get two for that. And then we do the same math we did before. So the goblins have 21 times, here I was counting them as heavy foot, so 21 times 5 is 105. The horsemen have 19 times 6, which is 114, right? Yeah. So they've got 126 versus 107, which is, again, still a dis difference of... Uh, Less than 20, so the melee continues. However, these guys are now exhausted. Which is not good for them. These guys are not exhausted because they have they moved once and they've been in melee. Well, actually, two, melee for two turns. Meleeing three rounds. Okay, so they are not. They're not exhausted, but these guys are. Okay, so... Oof, all right, we're in a bad spot there, horsemen. Something's got to happen hopefully soon. And that's the end of that melee. Now, this is a kind of an important initiative because if the wolves lose, they're going to kind of be in trouble here. If they win, I think they can turn some of the tide a little bit. Okay, they win. Good. They're going to choose to move first. This guy is going to boot it. <laughs> He's going to go straight. Actually, he doesn't want to go too far. They, it takes their full move for them to turn around, so he only needs to go far enough away they can't drag him back into the melee. So he's actually going to go... Actually, you know what he can do? He can use a quarter of his movement to turn sideways and then still move eight this way. And I think that's what he'll do because from there... Oh, that's no good. Nope, he's going to go straight ahead. He's going to move... Not his full movement, he's going to move to there. Because that puts him not close enough to anybody to be tagged immediately. <laughs> so, he's hoping that he can uh, rely on luck a little bit. Oh, there was a melee there too. So, he's actually close to getting out of here. All right, good. If these guys are engaged, they can't move. This guy here, though. Boy, he can't charge, but he really needs to charge. So what he's going to do is move straight forward, eight, and then do a right turn, which would take quarter, and then he's going to stop. Okay. So now, once again, these guys have to make a decision right here. If they are loyal, well, actually, they kind of want to protect him. So are they going to just reform again? They can actually do a right face. So they're facing this guy, and that's exactly what they're going to do. There's not even a question there. I'm just going to do that. Instead of trying to take out the other guy. They're going to do a right face. They can then move, you know, one and a half centimeters, which is basically that. They're basically facing the charge. We'll see what happens next turn with that. Okay. These guys are going to rest. 
because they want to have their strength for when stuff happens. Oh, these guys left the board. Okay, I was like, why are they over there? All right, and that's all the movement. So there's only one Malay, which is here. Now we're in an interesting situation because the horsemen are going to fight as one level lower, defend as one level lower, and the morale drops. So they're going to both, they're going to basically drop down to one level lower would be armored foot. So they go from light horse to armored foot, but I don't think that actually changes the numbers for us at all at this point. So armored foot attacking light is one die per, no, it does drop it down. Armored foot versus light foot is one die, four to six kill. So they're on five dice now, but they got a better chance per die to kill. Defending his armored foot. Oh yeah, yeah. So sure enough. Yeah, defending his armored foot though, they still have the same. Oh, that's funny. Armored foot are actually more. Well, that's what it says. I feel like that's not right, but because that's per three men. This probably should be three men, not four. But anyways, this is the way the charts are, this is what we're gonna use. So they're only rolling one die now. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> they actually got an advantage. That doesn't actually make any sense, so I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to reverse those two, so for future malaise, we're going to use it the other way around. Let me make a little note to myself, because that does not make any sense. And what we're going to say is, the goblins, the goblins on foot are going to throw two dice. Six is kill. Nope. These guys are going to throw five dice. Four through six kills. Oh, okay. And they got three kills. So, three, three more kills. So again, we go back to our numbers. The, these guys killed three times the D6. They need a high roll here. That's 15. They also now have an equal number of people. So there's nothing else there. So we've got five times 19, which is 95 over, these guys kept the same number, 114. So that's literally 95, so that's 19. Wow, okay. So it's, uh, it's the exact same result. But now, these guys are also exhausted. So that's interesting. And we go into the next turn. All right, so let me just roll initiative and I'll think about what to do after that. Okay, good. <laughs> well, good for the wolf riders. I don't know why I'm voting for them. Maybe because they're the underdogs. Underdogs, huh? Okay, they want initiative, they're gonna move first. This guy, again, does not want to get charged. So what he's gonna do is he's just gonna move as far away over here as he can, and then he's gonna rest next turn. So he's gonna just make an oblique turn, and then he's gonna move So the oblique turn would normally cost him three, but instead it costs him 1.5. So instead of moving 12, he can move a 10 and a half, 10 and a half, and he'll just go here. And that's it. He's going to move there and next turn. So he's exhausted, actually. Cool. These guys can't move. These guys are going to charge. It's going to make them exhausted, but the charge will happen first. They're hoping for the best. They are light horse charging heavy foot. So these guys need to make a seven or better. If they don't, they're going to retreat from the charge. And then the charge er will be able to continue to go and get pushed back. We've done this before. So let's see. Seven or better. Oh, they made it. Okay. They do not fall to the charge. Boom. That is not going to be great for this guy. He'll be exhausted after this turn. So I'm just going to take these off and do that. But when we do the melee, he's not exhausted yet. These guys will also be exhausted because they will have fought in a melee. The middle ones, anyways. These guys over here. I guess, for the, well, they haven't moved yet. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, this horseman is in a lot of trouble. They're going to... 
they're going to move. Actually, I don't think they can because if they if they if they turn, they can only move a centimeter and a half. So they can't actually get a flank on them if they move up. What they if they turn and move up. So what they actually need to do is turn and then move, and move and then turn. If that makes sense. So they can't actually fight them this round, but they can move up like this, which again is going to make them exhausted. And they can't turn yet. They're basically sideways. <laughs> it's funny, but that's just the way it is. That's kind of why the move, that's why the facing is important. So basically everybody in this group after this melee is going to be exhausted. So let's do these two combats. Everybody's exhausted here. Everybody's exhausted there. I wonder. No. I was going to say, I wonder if they would be like, you know, let's chill for a second. <laughs> but let's say no. This guy here, thinking he was going to be able to take it. Well, he's not very strong, to be honest. He's going to stay where he is. This group over here is worried about these horses, though. So they're going to they're gonna right face, and they're just going to stay like that. Well, they'll move up a little bit, then right face. So they'll basically be like that. Hopefully protecting the, the Goblin King. And as I said, this guy's going to rest, so he will not be exhausted anymore. These guys are going to make a full turn to do an about face. So they can, and they're now separate. But we'll just say, I'll just let them go back together without costing anything. They're just reforming, basically. And I think they are one away from being exhausted. So they're, they're right there. Okay, so we have two malaise. Again, these guys are fighting as, now everybody's one level lower. All right. So this is where it gets a little interesting. So these guys are now only attacking his light foot. Oh, which is what I was looking at before. So, no, I wasn't. I was looking at heavy. So heavy foot, or I should say light foot, against armored is one die per two men, six kills. Yeah, was I doing that wrong? No, it would have been the same anyways. Heavy would have been the exact same thing. So it's funny that's the case. It should be three then. It makes sense that it's three. I actually feel like this is not correct then, this light horse. We'll have to figure out why that's like that. But uh, it's three men. So they're going to get one toss. These guys, on the other hand, are attacking against what would have been light foot. So I'm going to give them a plus one. So what's going to happen here is these guys are throwing one die. They need to get a six to, to hit. They got it. All right. These guys are throwing five dice. Four through six hits, but they get a plus one on each one. So basically three through six hits. So five dice, three through six is a kill. Huh, okay, they got three. One, two, three. Oh, that's interesting. That drops them down to, oh no, no, they had 25 to start with. Okay, so three. I'm just gonna do the full setup here. So. Because they won the melee, they're going to get a d6 times the number, so 15. Okay, so they get 15. They lost one more person, so they drop down to instead of 114, they are 108. These guys lost three more, so they're basically 15 times 5, which is 65. So 65, 108, that's 43. Okay, so something is going to happen here. 43 difference. And actually, the numbers are low enough. I might have to start doubling them. If less than 20 figures per side are involved, actually, they were this time, so we'll double everything. So instead of 43, we're looking at 83. So 83, route, one and a half moves. Okay, so these guys are back. I mean, there's a hill there, so it's going to eat up. So they're going to move back one and a half moves. They can move three on the hill. And then another uh, four. Okay, so they're going to be here, and they're routed, so they're facing the wrong way. They're still exhausted. These guys are good. They can stay where they're at. All right, up here, this guy, this first round, he's okay, because he's still light horse. Uh, attacking light foot. Ah. 
So light horse again against light foot. Two dice per man, five or six kills. They get no bonus or anything. This is where they have to roll really well. Because <laughs> it's going to be very bad for them if not. So they're going to roll all ten of these dice. Fives and sixes are kills. Okay, that's not bad. It's not great, but not bad. Five would have been better, but they got four. Okay, that's four kills against Goblin One. But here's where it really matters. These guys are heavy foot attacking light horse. So it's one by for two men. They're rolling two dice. Six is kill. No kills. Okay, that actually is what this side needed. Now, they killed th three, four of them. So I'm going to roll a d6 times four. Four. That's not good. All right, so let me get my paper here. Four. And then they've got 25 times six, which is 150. So they're 154. These guys are 21. So they actually have more members too. So they get at that difference so there. They get three more. So they're 157. These other guys are now 22 times 5, which is 110, which is 110. So that's a difference of 47, and the groups are both, both sides are above 20, so that's the straight number, 47. So 40 to 59, back one move, good order. Okay, that's actually good. They got to move back one full move in good order. So that's six inches back, but they still get to face their enemy. Who are these guys? Okay, good. They're exhausted now, though. Basically, everybody here is exhausted. <laughs> oh, actually, I don't think that they would have been because they, oh, they did, they moved. Now they're sideways, so they can't actually fight at this moment. And that is the end of what we got going on here. So, <laughs> all right, let's hope for the wolves sake that they win initiative. Thanks so much for watching. If you've been enjoying this video series, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more like that. You can leave a comment below with your comments you can also check the description. You'll find a link to all the different stuff I use for this game and a link to my Discord server where you can join the conversation. You'll also find a link down there for my Patreon if you want to support the channel. I'll talk to you soon.